Soul Twin Audios, stories created solely with a vintage soul in mind. Modern day era driving you up a wall? Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pain. O-T-R-T-S-T-A, what story can I connect you with today? Hello? Hello? (laughs) That's funny. There seems to be some kind of a problem with the connection. Hello? Hello? I'm trying to reach... Soul Twin Audios brings you Sorry, Wrong Number. Soul Twin Audios presents Suspense's recreation of Sorry Wrong Number, starring Julie Hoverson as Mrs. Stevenson. Call, please. Operator, I've been dialing Murray Hill 70093 now for the last three quarters of an hour, and the line is always busy. I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? I will be glad to try that number for you. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all this time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor, and I've been feeling so nervous all day. Ringing Murray Hill 7-0093. Hello? Hello? Hello, is... is Mr. Stevenson there? Hello? 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 George? Yes, sir. This is George speaking. Hello? Who's this? What number am I calling, please? I'm here with our client. Oh, good. Is uh, everything okay? Is the coast clear for tonight? Yeah, George. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Okay, okay. Where are you now? In a phone booth. Don't worry. Everything's okay. Very well. You know the address? Yeah, yeah, I know. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar in 2nd Avenue for a beer. That's right. At 11 o'clock. I'll make sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should only be one light visible from the street. Yeah, yeah, I know. At 11.15, a train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case her window's open and she should scream. Whoa! Hello? What number is this, please? Okay, I understand, I tell you. It's 11.15, the train. Yeah. You remember everything else, George? Yeah, yeah, I make it quick. As little blood as possible. (gasps) Because our client does not wish to make her suffer long. That's right. You'll use a knife? Yes, a knife will be okay. 
And afterwards, I removed the rings and the bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer because our client wishes it to look like a simple robbery. Don't worry, everything's okay. I never made... Oh, oh, how awful! How unspeakably awful! Call, please. Operator, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry. What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be Murray Hill 70093, but it wasn't. Some wires must have crossed. I was cut into a wrong number, and I... I... I've just heard the most dreadful thing. Something about a... a, a murder, and... Operator, you simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon. May I help you? Oh, I know it was a wrong number, and I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends, and they were going to murder somebody. Some poor innocent woman who was all alone in a house near a bridge. And we've got to stop them. We've got to. Uh, what number were you calling, please? Well, that doesn't matter. This was a wrong number. And you dialed it for me. And we've got to find out what it was immediately. What number did you call? Oh, why are you so stupid? What time is it? Do you mean to tell me you can't find out what that number was just now? I'll connect you with the chief operator. Oh, I think it's perfectly shameful. Now look, look. It was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try Murray Hill 70093 for me. You dialed it, but your finger must have slipped, and I was connected with some other number. And I could hear them, but they couldn't hear me. Now, I I, I simply failed to see why you couldn't make that same mistake again on purpose. Why you couldn't try to dial Murray Hill 70093 in the same sort of careless way. Murray Hill 7-0093? Yes! I'll try to get it for you. Well, thank you. I'm sorry. Murray Hill 7-0093 is busy. I'll call you in 20 minutes. Operator? Operator? Operator! Your call, please. You didn't try to get that wrong number at all. I asked you explicitly and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry. What number are you calling? Well, can't you for once forget what number I'm calling and do something for me? Now I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty... And it's your civic duty to trace that call and to apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you won't... I will connect you with the chief operator. Please. Oh, dear. This is the chief operator. Oh, uh, chief operator. I want you to trace a call, a telephone call, immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that it be tracked down. Because it was about a murder that someone's planning. A terrible, cold-blooded murder of a poor, innocent woman. Tonight, at 11.15. I see. Well, can you trace it for me? Can you track down those men? I'm not certain. It depends. Depends on what? It depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, we can't. Disconnected? If the parties have stopped talking to each other. Oh, but of course they must have stopped talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I can try tracing it. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Elbert Stevenson. But listen... And your telephone number, please? Plaza 42295. But if you go on wasting all this time... Why do you want this call trace, please? What? I... Well... No reason. I... I mean, I merely felt very strongly that something ought to be done about it. These men sounded like killers... They're dangerous. They're going to murder this woman at 11.15 tonight, and I thought police ought to know. Have you reported this to the police? Well, no. 
Not yet. You want this cold check purely as a private individual? Yes, yes, but meanwhile... I'm sorry, Mrs. Stevenson, but I'm afraid we couldn't make this check for you and trace the call just on your say-so as a private individual. We'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake. You mean to tell me I can't report that there's going to be a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why, it's perfectly idiotic. Well, all right. I'll call the police. Thank you. I'm sure that would be the best way to... Ridiculous. Perfectly ridiculous. The thought of it. I can't see why I have to go to all this trouble. Go! Your call, please. The police department. Get me the police department, please. Thank you. Oh, dear. Do you have to dial? Can't you ring them direct? Ringing the police department. Police Station, Precinct 43, Sergeant Martin speaking. Police Department? Ah, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Elbert Smythe Stevenson of 53 North Sutton Place. I'm calling up to report a murder. I mean, uh, the murder hasn't been committed yet, but I just overheard plans for it over the telephone, over a wrong number that the operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid. And I guess in the end you're the only people who can do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking, and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in a house near a bridge. Are... are you listening to me? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to go around for a beer on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelets and... and use a knife. Well, it's... it's unnerved me dreadfully. And I'm not well. And I feel so nervous. I see. When was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Then then you can do something. You do understand. What is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson. Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Sutton Place. 53 North Sutton Place. That's near a bridge. The Queensboro Bridge, you know. And, and we have a private patrolman on our street and 2nd Avenue. And what was that number you were calling? Murray Hill 70093. But that wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Murray Hill 70093 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to ask him to come home. I'm an invalid, you know, and it's the mate's night off, and I hate to be alone, even though he says I'm perfectly safe, as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and see if we can check it with the telephone company. But the telephone company said they couldn't check the call if the parties had stopped talking. I've already taken care of that. Oh, you have? Yes. And personally, I feel you ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than just check the call. What good does checking the call do if they've stopped talking? By the time you tracked it down, they'll already have committed the murder. Well, we'll take care of it, don't you worry. Well, I'd say the whole thing calls for a search. A complete and thorough search of the whole city. Now, I'm very near the bridge, and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue. And I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you sent round a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And, uh, what makes you think the murder's going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Well, I... Oh, I don't know. Only the coincidence is so horrible. Second Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. Second Avenue is a, is a very long street, ma'am. And you know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Yes, I know. Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens, and the Bronx. I know that. How do you know? There isn't some little house on Staten Island, on some little Second Avenue you've never even heard about. How do you know they're even talking about New York at all? But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. <laughs> Maybe it was a long-distance call you overheard. Oh, don't! Telephones are funny things. Look, lady, 
Why don't you look at it this way? Supposing you hadn't broken in on that telephone call. Supposing you'd got your husband the way you always do. You wouldn't be so upset now, would you? Well, no, I suppose not. Only it sounded so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are plotted in this city every day, ma'am. We manage to prevent almost all of them. But... But a clue of this kind is so vague. It isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely you can... Unless, of course, you have some reason for thinking this call was phony and that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh, oh, no, no. I hardly think so. I mean, why should anybody? I'm alone all day and night. I see nobody except my maid Eloise, and she's a big girl. She weighs two hundred pounds. She's too lazy to bring up my breakfast tray, and the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me. He, he just adores me. He waits on me hand and foot. He's scarcely left my side since I took sick. Well, twelve years ago. Well, then there's nothing for you to worry about. Now, if you'll just leave the rest of this to us, we'll take care of it. But what will you do? It's so late. It's nearly eleven now. We'll take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city? And send out squads? And warn your radio cars to watch out? Especially in suspicious neighborhoods, like mine. Lady, I said we'd take care of it. Just now I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require immediate attention. Good night, ma'am, and thank you. Oh, you... you... Uh. <laughs> Idiot! Oh, now, why did I hang up the phone like that? He'll think I am a fool. No. Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he come home? This must be so... Why? Why? Come on, it's... Your call, please. Oh, operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Murray Hill 70093 number again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. I will try it for you. Well, try. Try! I don't see why he doesn't answer it. I'm sorry. Murray Hill 7-0093 is busy. I will... I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. <laughs> If I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could get a breath of fresh air, just lean out the window and see the street. <gasps> Hello, Albert! Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? Hello? Oh. <gasps> hello, hello. Oh, for heaven's sake, who is this? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> who is trying to call me? What's the matter with this telephone tonight? But it's positively driving me crazy. I've never seen such inefficient, miserable service. Uh, now, now look, I'm an invalid and I'm very nervous and I'm not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble, please? Well, everything's wrong. I haven't had one bit of satisfaction out of one call I've made this evening. The whole world could be murdered for all you people care. And now my phone keeps ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing every five seconds. And when I pick it up, there's no one there. I'm sorry. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put that call through, whatever it is, at once. I'm afraid I cannot do that. You can't. 
And why? Why, may I ask? The dial system is automatic. <clears throat> if someone is trying to dial your number, there is no way to check it if the call is coming through the system or not, unless the person who's trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. <laughs> of all the stupid... <laughs> and meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that phone rings, imagining everything I... I will try to check the trouble for you. Check it? Check it? That's all anybody can do. Now what's the use of talking to you? You're so stupid! <clears throat> Oh, I'll fix her. Of all the impudent... How dare she speak to me like that? How dare she? Call the operator. Now, why does it take so long? Your call, please. Young woman, I don't know your name, but there are ways of finding you out. And I'm going to report you to your superiors for the most unpardonable rudeness and insolence it's ever been my privilege. Give me the business office at once. You may dial that number direct. Dial it direct? I'll do no such thing. I don't even know the number. The number is in the directory, or you may secure it by dialing information. Listen here, you. Oh, what's the use? Oh, dear. Oh, for heaven's sake, I'm going out of my mind. Out of my... Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me, do you hear? Answer me. Who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? The police. <laughs> oh, if Albert would only come home. Oh, let it ring. Let it go on ringing. It's a trick of some kind. I won't answer it. I won't. I won't. I won't even if it goes on ringing all night. You ring. Go ahead and ring. Stopped. Now, now what's the matter? Why did they stop ringing all of a sudden? Oh... What time is it? Where did I put that uh, clock? Oh, here it is. Five to eleven. Oh, they've decided something. They're sure I'm home. They heard my voice answer them just now. That's why they've been ringing me. Why no one has answered me. I'll call the operator again. <laughs> Is she? Why doesn't she answer? Why doesn't she answer? Your call, please. Where were you just now? Why didn't you answer at once? Oh, give me the police department. I'm sorry, the line is busy. I will call busy? you. Busy? But that's impossible. The police department can't be busy. There must be other lines available. The line is busy. I will try to get them for you later. No, no. I've got to speak to them now, or it may be too late. I've got to talk to someone. What number do you wish to speak to? I don't know, but there must be someone to protect people besides the police department. A detective agency. A... You will find agencies listed in the classified directory. But I don't have a classified. I mean, I, I'm, t I'm too nervous to look it up. And I, I don't know how to use the... I'll connect you with information. Perhaps she will be able to help you. No, no. You're being spiteful, aren't you? You don't care, do you, what happens to me? I could die and you wouldn't care. No. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand anymore! Hello? What do you want? Stop ringing, will you? Stop it! Hello, is this Plaza 4-2295? Yes. 
yes, I'm, I'm sorry. This, this is Plaza 42295. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Is anyone there to receive the message? I'm, I'm Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Try to get you for the last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston, 11 p.m. tonight on urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love, Sign Albert. Oh, no. Do you wish for us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Nobody knows I'll be all alone. It's some trick. Some fiendish trick. Trick. Why doesn't she? Your call, please. Operator, try that Murray Hill 70093 number for me. Just once more, please. You may dial that number direct. <gasps> oh! Of <laughs> Murray Hill 7009. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. No, Albert. How could you? How could you? How could you? I I can't be alone tonight. I can't. If I'm alone one more second, I'll go mad. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm a sick woman. I'm entitled. I'm entitled. Information. May I help you? I... I want the telephone number of Henchley Hospital. Henchley Hospital? Do you have the street address? Oh, no, it's somewhere in the 70s. It's a very small, private, and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix out two years ago. Henchley, um, H-E-N-C... One moment, please. Please hurry. And please, uh, what is the time? You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake! I've no time to be dialing. The number of Henchley Hospital is Butterfield 70105. Uh, Butterfield 70105. Nurses registry. Who is it you wish to speak to, please? I want the nurses registry at once. I want a trained nurse. I want to hire her immediately for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the call, madam? Nerves. I'm very nervous. I need soothing companionship. You see, my husband is away, and I Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No, but I really don't see why all this catechizing is necessary. I just want a trained nurse. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago. And after all, I do expect to pay this person for attending me. We quite understand that, madam. But these are war times, you know. Well... Registered nurses are very scarce just now. And our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels that it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. I'm... I'm very upset. Very! I'm alone in this house, and I'm an invalid. And tonight I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully. In fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. And what is your name, madam? Miss Phillips. And when do you expect her in? Well, I really couldn't say. 
She went out to supper at eleven o'clock. Eleven o'clock? But it's not eleven yet. Oh, oh, my clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just fifteen minutes past eleven. What? What was that? What was... what, madam? That... that click. Just now, in my own telephone. As though someone had lifted the receiver off the hook of the extension telephone downstairs. Well, I didn't hear it, madam. Now, about this... But I did. There's someone in this house. Someone downstairs in the kitchen. And they're... they're listening to me now. They're... I won't pick it up. I, I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet, and they'll think... Oh, but if I don't call someone now while they're still down there, there'll be no time. <sighs> Your call, please. Operator. Operator, I'm in desperate trouble. I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Please speak louder. I don't dare. I... There's... Someone listening. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. But you've got to hear me. Oh, please, you've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you've got to get in touch with... <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. Did you hear it? He's put it down. He's put down the extension phone. He's coming up. He's coming up the stairs. Give me the police department. The police department. Police department. Give it to me. One moment, please. I will connect you. I can, I can hear him. He's near her. Oh, I hear him. I hear him. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Footsteps in the hall, in the door. No, please, please. Ah! Police Department, Sergeant Martin speaking. 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 Police Department? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Must have got the wrong number. Uh, uh, don't worry. Everything's okay. Sorry Wrong Number was written by Lucille Fletcher as a radio play for the program Suspense. This recreation was produced and directed by Rachel Pulliam for Soul Twin Audio's Old Time Radio Theater range. Featured in our cast, Julie Hoverson as Mrs. Stevenson, Christina Roberts as the operator, Robin Robbins as the man, Dean T. Moody as George, Karen Corrado as the chief operator, Jerry Kokich as Sergeant Martin, Michael Hornstein as Western Union, Madeline Hamlet as Information, and Gina Moravec as the Hospital Receptionist. The suspense theme was composed by Bernard Herrmann and reimagined by David Krause, with original music composed by Dr. Ross Bernhardt. Sound effects were provided by freesound.org. 
Soul Twin Audios is copyrighted by Rachel Pulliam in 2023. This is your announcer, Dean T. Moody. Thanks for listening.